What's up guys, Cranius Maximus here, bringing you guys another YouTube video, and today I'm going to bring you guys five tips on how to improve at Call of Duty. These tips are specifically geared towards competitive, but they can apply to most multiplayer scenarios. The gameplay you guys are going to get to see is a doubles match, a competitive doubles match with me and my boy Divinity, and uh, I think it was really informative and it was the gameplay that I've been looking for to do my analysis for some time. So, let's get into it. So like I said, while these tips are competitive Call of Duty specific, they do apply to multiplayer as well. The first tip that I have for you guys is to recognize when you need to make adaptations. I'm going to play a quick clip for you guys with the beginning of our match where Austin and I actually go down two rounds because we just go middle and it doesn't work out for us. So we go middle two rounds and we realize it isn't working. Take a look. Alright, let's go. Alright, where to? Uh, the objectives. Let's play lower. I'm gonna rush straight in if you can kind of watch me. They didn't go mid. Mid! Yeah, he did. Oh, I just lagged so hard. Yeah. You're not paid to fail. Get back in the game. Did you see that on my screen? Holy god, I just lagged so hard. Shots. Yeah, didn't even fire at that guy until it's too late. All right, no big thing. No, no, Destroy wait. the objective. Yeah, no, they've hit middle. Throw that one away. Bomb acquired. Let's go middle to B. Do the same thing, but on the other side. You shoot at you? Yep. Charge is dropped. Ah! Did you get one of them? Nope. I didn't want to hit you. Not you. Yeah, so yeah. Damn. Oh, yeah. Okay, so it's just been a middle battle so far. Alright. Uh, I can start. We'll be, yeah. we'll be alright. Okay, no more middle. Yep, play the flanks. So you guys heard us identify it there, Austin said, you know what, no more middle, and I said, yeah, let's play the flanks, and that round we actually take, I'm going to throw that clip in there in a second, but I also wanted to touch on something else, both Austin and I during that clip, those first two losses were like, you know what, never mind, it'll be all good, we'll figure it out, you know, no big deal, those two losses, we're not going to let them get to us, and, you know, we're veteran uh, GB players, we've been playing GBs a long time, and it's important to understand that those first two losses, you cannot let get to you, and can't let it impact the rest of the game because otherwise it's going to get in your head and you're going to get frustrated and start making mistakes. In multiplayer, the strategy applies when somebody's doing something that's cramping your style. You know, there, there's that guy with the Titan LMG holding down the middle of the map, or this kid with the Spitfire sitting in one corner of the map the whole time, and it's just something you got to play around and try to adapt and overcome. Now, realistically, if I'm being completely honest with you guys, I get frustrated and back out of about 50% of those scenarios, but that's because they're pubs and I kind of don't care. Uh, in competitive, you obviously don't have that option. So, bad practice on my part, but I figured I'd be transparent with you guys and admit I'm a human being and I totally sometimes don't even apply this strategy myself. In either case, guys, I do want to go ahead and play that third round for you so that you guys can see an example of how we actively applied the flanking strategy and managed to catch our opponents off guard. Protect the objective. Somehow they win that. I've got an AR. It shouldn't happen. I'm gonna hit A ring and then peek mid. Okay, I'm just gonna watch. Here. Push him. Nice, baby. Good stuff. Keep up the pressure. That kid Break was fucked, down. dude. Fucked with a Q. <laughs> kid was mega fucked. The second tip that I have for you guys is for all you Call of Duty doubles players out there, you're going to want to position yourself close enough to your teammate to be able to help him out, but you want to be far enough away that you don't exploit a vulnerability and allow your opponents an easy two-piece. This applies to multiplayer if you're running in with a squad and stuff like that, but this is mostly a competitive doubles tip. So, in this next clip you're going to see Austin and I running fairly close together, but I'm not going to be side by side. He's going to make a call that some guy's top mid, I'm going to kill that guy. Then, I'm going to go and immediately cover a different area of the map. This prevents us from getting two-pieced from his opponent, or sorry, the teammate of the opponent we just killed, who now knows where we are. But also, what moving is going to do for me is make sure that I can cover another area of the map, which is important in doubles. You want to make sure you have maximum map coverage while basically being as close to your teammate as possible. 
I think this next clip shows a lot about that, and uh, it's a nice way of moving that I think a lot of you guys can take something from. So have a look. Let's go B. Eliminate the objectives. We got the bomb. Got a nine bang. I'm gonna toss it over there. Okay. Didn't hit nothing. He can mid. Yeah, he's mid. Top mid. Dead. Nice. Good shot. One tango left. Nice, Take him out. man. Good stuff. Coughlin! Put down your weapon! So this fourth tip that I have for improving uh, is just like anything when it comes to improving on something, and it's that you got to find where you perform suboptimally and identify it and fix it. And that means going through what you think you might have done well and saying, you know, maybe I didn't do that quite well enough. And uh, now I know that's a generic tip for any improvement video, and I'm going to try and give you guys a concrete example. Again, competitively focused, but if you want to be better at multiplayer, you want to have a higher KD, you want to get better at your nades, something like that, uh, again, this tip applies there too. In this next clip, you're going to get to see Austin dies in a room, and we have this huge close quarter battle, not unlike the one we had at mid lane, we actually ended up going mid, and uh, I end up killing both of our opponents. You know, I end up winning the match, and you know, after the initial hype, I said, you know, I really did not do that good a job. I got down to like 22 health, and I hip-fired the guy, and basically, I should not have gone in. You're gonna see me actually go forward with the assault rifle when I know both of my opponents are in front of me, and the smart thing to do is to go backwards. You're also gonna see the opponents that were against slide in front of me and line up for a two-piece and make a lot of the mistakes that I've already mentioned you shouldn't make. They make a lot of positioning mistakes, and the guy that slides in front of me manages to not hit a single round, and I got out by the skin of my teeth. What I want you guys to take away from this, or I think what would be helpful to take away from it, is that even in scenarios where it's it looks like you won, uh, there's always room for improvement. So go ahead and have a look, and I think you guys will see what I mean. Okay. I have an RC. Here comes their seeker. He's coming in! Oh, Holy crap! You killed them both? Yeah. Holy shit! Keep all the pressure. Monsters. Break them down. Damn, dude. <laughs> so, as you guys can see, gun skill probably played a part in that equation. They didn't hit me with a single round. I was at 22 health, and I managed to land all my shots. Sometimes that's going to happen, but you can always position yourself better to uh, give yourself a higher percentage of winning those gunfights. Now the fourth tip that I have for you guys, and the actual fourth tip for those of you who are paying attention, uh, I had four clips and I didn't realize that one of them was my intro so I counted and uh, miscounted because I'm a human being and I make mistakes. But anyway, the fourth tip that I have for you guys is that you shouldn't always take a shot at somebody even if you see them. And this happens to me all the time, you know, I'll see somebody get trigger happy, plank them with a couple shots, they'll run in around the corner with a couple la rounds of lead in their back, and then they'll heal it up with this little bandage. And we're back to square one, the only difference being, they know I'm there. Uh, in this next clip, you're going to get to see it in just a fraction of a second. This kid runs around the corner, and I don't hip fire him as I'm mantling over the wall to chase him. I wait until I go into the same room that he's in. And he's actually mantling the wall, so he has, or mantling like the window out of the room, so he has absolutely no chance to shoot at me, and that's when I take my shot. It's a small clip, and it really, at first glance, doesn't seem that impactful, but that's going to make all the difference, particularly in competitive matches and blackout and stuff like that, where the element of surprise is so much more important than multiplayer when everybody's just slinging shit around and it's noisy and confusing all the time. Have a look. Fuck, okay, he's A, he's A, he's A. He's, uh, on that long walkway. Oh, he pushed into our building. Damn it. Last man standing. God, I'm getting you shot know what that. to do. So yeah, I know it seems pretty insignificant, but I can't tell you guys how many times I've run around the corner, I pipe somebody with a couple rounds of lead, and they heal it up with a bandage, and I'm in a bad spot. Then they hose me down with a bunch of Spitfire ammo, and again, particularly important in Blackout and Competitive when the element of surprise means so much. The last tip that I have for you guys is to be aware of the search timer, right? So, this next clip you're going to see, uh, we plant the bomb, 1v2 situation, and I realize, you know what, I'm on defense now, I don't really have any obligations. And right around 11 seconds, I go ahead and back up, because I know they're either going to have to find me or defuse the bomb. Don't expose myself to any bad situations, and then right around 5 or 6, I peek out, and lo and behold, these kids are on the bomb. Well, 
they're also violating one of the other tips that I have, which is don't clump up for an easy kill. So I just go ahead and pop them both like Batman and Robin in the same nest, man. You're going to see it. One of the they're, they're standing over each other like they're married or something. Or they're about to be. It was like some kind of proposal. I just kind of dropped them both. Anyway, uh, I'll just go ahead and play the clip. Hope you guys enjoy it. Magnum MN. Probably going to wrap around. No joy. Nothing. Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. I'm just watching put this backside. I'm putting down A. Coming. Put down B. Coming. I'm gonna head with the bomb. Bomb active. Actually, no, I'm not. That's a really bad sight line for me. I'm gonna check, I'm gonna I'm gonna check our bombs. backs. I got our backs. They go all the way around, though. I'm not gonna see it. He's on it, he's on it. I need help. I'm coming. getting flanked. Coming. Damn it. Last man standing. I keep getting shot. You know what back. to do. It's on the right side. Ah! Oh my goodness. So yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed that example of timing. It was a really nice example, and we got to see them violate some earlier principles, which was nice. I'm just going to go ahead and recap the tips. Tip one. You guys want to make sure that you're recognizing mistakes early and adapt to it early on in a match. Tip two, position yourself such that you can assist your teammates, but also not get picked off too easily. Don't give any two pieces or double kills away, particularly important in doubles. Tip three, recognize when you need to improve on something, even when you've done well. Uh, particularly important, basically in every area of life. Tip four. You guys want to make sure that you don't take any shots you're not supposed to take. Wait till you can take your shots and win the gunfight without any contests at all. And tip 5, of course, be aware of the search timer and search and destroy. Again, all pretty competitively focused tips, but completely applicable in multiplayer and blackout. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope this helped. Uh, if it did, please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. We will